It takes an average of about 10 years to become a jujitsu black belt. If you can pay attention for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how you can reduce them to white belts and blast through the guards like Daenerys did to King's Landing. The blast knee cut is a complex guard passing system based on timing, weight distribution, and a variety of other important details. However, to simplify it so that even a five-year-old understands, I've broken it down into three critical missions, and if you can accomplish all three, you too can make black belts look like this. Nice, Carson. And at the end of the video, I'll be using these missions to take on every belt level from white to black at one of the most prestigious gyms in Washington. In order to fully comprehend how I learned this technique, let me take you back to June of 2022. Hey, what up, bitch? Long story short, I ended up at Andrew Wilty's house for two and a half months. Bro, I'm in a wizard suit. Training and traveling with him, and that's how I found many of my knee cut details. The first being the starting position and mission one, achieving headquarters. Even after departing Andrew's house, I still cannot figure out how to hold or attack from headquarters. But let me give you an example of what I looked like last November compared to this November. So as I try to enter the knee slice here, notice how my knee and elbow are far beyond connected and my opponent actually also has a barrier between them. So as I dive in for the knee cut, my opponent uses that knee shield to create space and this allows him to get his frames back in and retain his guard. Now let's compare this to today's footage. As I enter headquarters, my knee and elbow connect, preventing the knee shield from coming back to the inside as I start to set up the blast cut. When trying to stabilize, notice how my knees are also pinching inward, keeping the inside leg trapped and allowing me to retain my balance while also keeping him pinned down. Now the ref did me dirty and stopped me mid cut, but by embracing my inner Fionn Davies, best believe I did hit a handful of basic bitch knee cuts. To put it in concepts, you want to keep the top leg trapped between your hips and you want to keep the bottom leg stuck between your knee and elbow and the ground. And the goal here is to play in this pocket long enough for mission 2 to open up and be able to capitalize when it does. Also, we are never allowing this leg to hook onto our knee. This puts us into a completely different position called daily heva and not headquarters. This is bad, this is good. Make sure you understand that. So now that we've reached the holy land, pay attention because the next words that come out of my mouth are quite literally magical and can turn a black belt into a white belt very fast. Yeah! <laughs> Mission 2 is the most important on the list and that's because if your opponent makes this mistake, it can be game over and you should be able to come out victorious against any belt level. So let's quickly talk about what you need to accomplish this goal. So in this match here with Andrew Wiltsey versus Pierre Oliver Leclerc, we can see one of the best highlights for Mission 2. Andrew first achieves Mission 1 entering headquarters. Then, as Pierre develops a grip on Andrew's ankle, it welcomes an underhook in the form of this small pocket between the ribs and elbow. And this is when you throw a fucking moon down onto your opponent with the blast cut. Anytime you notice your opponent's arm is flared, disconnected from their ribs, or grabbing your ankle, that meets the requirements for Mission 2, and you should be able to jump onto the blast cut. So now that you've met the conditions, let me walk you through how to actually attack the cut. So the first detail I want you to notice here is the connection of my knee and elbow. They stay connected for as long as possible until it's time for my knee to slice through, in which case it's replaced with my chest and therefore blocks the knee shield from entering in. My right arm here grips the inside of his thigh, allowing me to rip it open if necessary. Then as I'm finishing the dive, my right leg and arm shoot out to brace myself and stabilize the position. And guys, this now brings us to the third and final mission, Cloud Castle. So at a newbie tournament in December of last year, I learned a valuable lesson. As I went to finish the knee cut, my opponent used the inside arm pressing against my hips and he was able to off balance me and push me off. The detail that I picked up from this match is I need to keep this arm off of my hip. So now instead of cross facing my opponent, I take my inside hand cupping around his elbow and pull his arm past my hip to negate his ability to off balance me using that arm. Also notice that my head is going to dive down ear to ear with my opponent, giving me the stability I need to start working their legs off of my foot. The reason I developed the name Cloud Castle is because while your upper body works as an immovable rock on your opponent's torso, your lower body is now allowed to move freely, allowing you to kick off your opponent's quarter guard and easily float into side control. All right, so guys, now that we've reviewed the three missions, I'm gonna be taking them into action and challenging the belt hierarchy of Logic Jiu Jitsu, going from white all the way up to black belt. So our first opponent, while he may be a white belt, was probably born and raised in the same place as Aquaman, so he's definitely not gonna be an easy round. My first objective is to get him on his back. I do that by attacking a low outside single leg, and as he tries to run away, I fall him to the ground where he decides to sit in a guard, and now we can start working towards that blast knee cut. 
Now keep in mind, I'm basically fighting the equivalent of a Justice League superhero, and I'm having a really hard time being able to stuff this leg between my hips. Now as stated earlier, for mission one, I just need to be able to play in this pocket long enough to recognize mission two. And now that it's open, I'm able to dive onto the blast knee cut and work my way into Cloud Castle. Now because of Ezra's size and strength, I wasn't quite able to pin him down, but I am able to transition right onto his back, toppling him over in turtle, and getting both my hooks in to start working to a choke. Eventually he makes a mistake exposing his neckline and I'm able to shoot my hand across his chin and sink in a deep rear naked choke. While we not only secured a guard pass but also got the submission, the day is only going to get harder so let's see what challenges we have in the next round. Our next opponent is going to be a submission hungry purple belt named Quentin. Now obviously as per the last round, I need to find a way to get Quentin to his back. Now instead of doing that, I drop into a double leg and give Quentin a free shot at my neck. To defend most guillotines, I focus on pressing the hips so we can't apply a lot of pressure to the guillotine. As he tries to roll me over, I make sure to roll through with him, that way I can come up first and not get stuck in mount. With defense better than your favorite NFL team, I'm able to escape the guillotine and then I'll dive right into a reverse de la Hiva, kiss the dragon. However, somewhere in my inversion, I screw up and Quentin's able to turn me right set up and put me on my back. Now I obviously can't pass his guard if I'm playing guard, so in order to get on top, I'll hit a quick arm drag from reverse de la Hiva, and I'll look to complete the first mission, achieving headquarters. I do this by swiping the foot and stepping to the inside, and now as mission 2 comes into play with Quentin's grip on my ankle, it's time to drop the Norse Fonstein castle onto his chest. Now I know I talked about these missions a lot. However, I did make a mistake here as Quentin's able to get his arm through my torso and he uses this to create a scramble and get back up to his feet. I'll try to move into turtle and attack his back from here, but as he tries to pull my leg through, I like to sit to guard and avoid the leg lock battle. Now as much as I love the blast knee cut, there's another technique that's also super close to my heart and that's the sunsetter triangle. As beautiful as my entry was, he does a good job sitting back to his hips and using his legs to pry me off of him. He then follows that up with a savage back take and nearly sinks in a deep rear naked choke. Oh shit! At the very last second, I was able to get my hand in to defend it, and then by pushing up on this elbow, I'm able to relieve the pressure long enough and start to work on escaping his hooks. I'll turn towards my side and go into turtle and use this to bridge him off my back and put him on the ground. With time creeping up on me, I have to start pushing the pace. As I sit in the headquarters, I notice that my foot isn't completely on the inside position. However, there is an underhook open, so in this case, I'm actually able to achieve mission one midair and catch the underhook on the way down. I can feel Quentin going for the same escape he used earlier, so I insert a wedge on his hip and his head and use this to solidify my position and collect the pass. So while we came out of that round strong, securing the pass in dominant fashion, we now move on to the toughest challenge of the day, a dangerous black belt and the owner of Logic Jiu Jitsu, Steven. Steven actually does half the work for me, being the first person to sit to guard today. However, he quickly reverses the position as he uses a wrestle up, wrestling up on a single leg and throwing me on the ground. Now I know you all came here to see the knee slice, but I'm never going to give up a sunsetter triangle when it's open. However, he quickly closes that opening as he dives into an underhook and flattens me on my back. Steven wastes no time, showing off his black belt, moving directly from half guard to the mount and eventually catches me in a tight arm triangle where I'm forced to tap. After a quick reset and crying in the corner, I start my game back up by shuffling to the outside looking for my north south pass before then stepping in headquarters. Steven begins to off balance me using De La Hiva, but I see mission 2 open and I drop into a tight underhook. After taking in a face full of nuts, I'm unfortunately not rewarded as Steven's able to scramble out and prevent the guard pass. As I walk in for another go at it, notice how shallow my foot is and how my knee is pointed inward. This allows Steven to lock up into his guard of De La Hiva rather than sitting into our headquarters position. While Steven's gripping my ankle, completing mission two, I'm actually unable to knee slice effectively until I'm able to break off this hook. As I go to move around his guard, Steven trips me, causing me to fall to my knees. However, I ultimately find a knee cut in the process and almost secure a pass. But in this case, because I wasn't able to flatten him towards his back, he's able to get up onto his side and bridge out of the position, scrambling to freedom. Now Steven isn't out of the fire yet. As I come back up to my feet, I find myself in the perfect headquarters position. We can also see that Steven's opening up that pocket for the underhook, enabling mission two. I know that an opportunity like this isn't gonna present itself again with a black belt of this level, so I need to put every ounce of energy that I have left into this blast cut.
So after passing Steven's guard, I went on to take over his gym. However, after giving me an irrefusable offer, I traded it back for whoever's dog this was. So with that, I hope you guys learned some tips and tricks to the blast knee cut, but also I wanted to emphasize one thing. If you were paying attention, mission two was the only constant throughout all three matches. Round one was missing headquarters, round three was missing cloud castle, but the underhook stuck through all three matches. I hope this not only highlights the importance of mission two, but also outlines the flexibility of missions one and three. Now, as you start to develop the blast cut further, you'll be able to hit this pass almost any time you see an underhook. However, I feel that the missions listed in this video will give you the best blueprint and high success rate when attacking this technique. Furthermore, if this video helped you, make sure to subscribe and also head on over to my second channel, Carsa BGG Rules, to check out the raw footage from today and more. Now, if you guys run into the problem where your opponent's not letting you step to the inside, go check out my previous video going over north-south passing, where I teach you the five mission system to pass black belts on the outside in only one week.